All right, these are pitching upgrades for the roster update coming out on July 29th, just two days from now. We're going to start with a really interesting situation here, wherein we need to actually create a card. We need to, we need to set the blueprint for a card that I think a lot of us might agree is long overdue. So I'm just going to take the old run-of-the-mill Pete Sha Peter Shaver over here. This guy's... Uh, what the hell is this porn name? Peter Shaver. That's, that's a weird name. I don't, I don't even know. I don't know what's going on with Peter Shaver, but you know who he's going to be right now? He's going to be Edwin Diaz. If you're a Mariners fan, you're wondering, where the hell is Edwin Diaz? And I don't blame you. It's kind of ridiculous, but um, he, needs, he needs to get his card going. He just, uh, for some reason, he's been pitching in the majors, pitching pretty well, and doesn't have a card. I don't get it. So he doesn't, he really is a two-pitch guy, but, you know, you get a minimum of three in this game. So it's really a four-seam slider, and then we'll give him a change-up, and it'll, be, it'll end up being pretty bad. So let, listen to some of these stats that he's got this year. And he's a recent starter, so I think he could actually get more of a uh, stamina because he was a starter, uh, starting prospect for them. All right, let's go to that four-seamer. He's pumping 97 mile an hour. He, oh, Pete Shaver is apparently a monster. Or wait, did that say, wait, what the hell? Why can it only go up to 93? What's going on with that noise? Is it because his potential's so low? Ninety-three? That's so lame. I don't understand. Well, that's lame as hell. I didn't know that, that there was restrictions on that. Pete Shaver, get your arm game up, homie. I swear, that's lame. I bet I can't even get this slider up to where it belongs either. Okay, I actually can, 87. All right, the slider is a freaking insane, insane pitch. It'll probably only go like 65, but the break should be ridiculous. It has a 45% strikeout rate. Oh, actually, these are his full year stats. 45% strikeout rate, 6% walk rate, 1.2 homers, and 8.7 hits. He was also great in double-A this year before the call-up. So... I don't know if having 95 would affect it anyway, so I guess it's really not that big of a deal. Um, it's really not. And then this 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 pitch will be kind of junky because he doesn't really have one. But then we'll uh, make his hits per nine. Excuse me, I was using that phone. His hits per nine are not that great because he is he is allowing 8.7. That's okay. That's a little bit kind of above average, maybe. Maybe a little bit better than average, and I think he can stifle the hits more in the future, but right now, it has to be a little bit lower. That, but then the K9 needs to be, I mean, filth. I would get up to like 84 right now. And then the walk rate, 6%. Come on, that's got to be good as well. So, Edwin Diaz, this is a rough sketch of what he should be. Peter Shaver. What the hell, that name. Uh, but but if they do an Edwin Diaz and they do it right, it should be massive K's, great walk rate, insane fastball, insane slider, worthless changeup. And I don't know what that would be. It doesn't really matter what it is, but I guess if they finally create it. Oh, 68. Look at that. So we created him as a 68. All right, now let's get into the proper upgrades. We're revisiting a few guys this week as we did with the hitters, just because it's ne it's necessary. And Justin Verlander, man, we're, we're hammering that drum until it freaking happens, I'll tell you what. He just continued to, to pitch very well. He was last upgraded on June 24th. Since then, seven hits, 3.1 walks, 10.3 Ks, and 1.3 homers. He was crushed by Cleveland. And then if you, if you actually just take his July, lop off the Cleveland start at the end there. I mean, it counts, obviously. But if you just kind of look at what he's done in July, it's 5.2 hits, 2.9 walks, 10.4 Ks, 0.3 homers. I mean, he's done enough for an upgrade. Last week we gave him 5 on the Ks, up to 79, and 5 on the hits, up to 72. I mean, that should that, obviously that's going to easily be enough to get him to gold, but I don't know what they're waiting for. Frankly, his velocity could probably jump up a little bit as well. He's really getting his velocity back. It's not that same Verlander who, you know, comes out, in low 90s, mid 90s, and then starts 
amping his way up, and then the eighth inning he was regularly hitting 99. But he still has 98-99 in his back pocket. That takes him to an 86, 84-86. to 86. Once again, Justin Verlander for gold. Um, a broken record at this point, but so be it. Really hoping this guy gets his upgrade because when he goes to the bullpen, I don't know if they're waiting and they're not going to upgrade him because he's going to go to the bullpen, but that's silly. They shouldn't do that. That, that should not affect it at all because the guy is absolute beast. All right, let's see here. He was upgraded on June, uh, July 8th, um, and all he's done is continue to beast out. He had another great outing this week already. He'll start again over the weekend, I believe. His home runs needs to go up three points. His walk is the one that really needs to go up. I got it up to 70. And then his Ks have to come down a little bit. I remember, put that down a little bit because he, he doesn't get, he can get, he can spike it up every once in a while and get a really good strikeout game. But for the most part, he's two or three pitches and out. He has nasty movement. You know, the control probably needs to bump up here on these pitches as well. I don't know. I don't think that affects the overall, but like he controls his pitches extremely well. So if those are both 50s, I would put them both up to 65. Now, I don't know the meter on this that much. Maybe that's like an obscene game changing upgrade because um, I, obviously I don't mess with these too much, but he needs some upgrade, whatever it is, with his, with, with his control. But we'll take the walks per nine upgrade at, at this point because I know that they're not necessarily going to dig in on the pitch data. Either way, it should easily get him to gold, of course. And it's same sort of deal. 84 to 86, just as we saw with Verlander. Another guy who beasted it out tonight and, that we're revisiting. And obviously tonight's game won't impact it. The, the uh, update is locked and loaded for, for uh, Friday night. Or excuse me, for Thursday night, Friday morning. But Lance McCullers Jr. just continues to go. And nothing that he's done in the last week plus has dissuaded what I, what I said about him last week. I mean, he's a strikeout master. These, these stats are out of date already because he pitched again tonight. So, honestly, I'm just going to let you know that his strikeout rate is around 12 per nine. Uh, he is walking a ton, but no homers. The hits are finally starting to uh, level off a little bit. He's becoming tougher to square up because his stuff is so nasty. The real big upgrade comes here with the uh, seven point, I guess that would be 83, I think. I think he started at 76. But seven point upgrade there. You got to ding him on the walks, which makes it tough that's what could keep him from gold but i also think that his homers deserve a six point upgrade frankly the case at this point i think he had 10 more tonight you know we're just going to bump it up to 85 again i know tonight doesn't actually count but I mean, he's just got to get there see it's only an 84 and i think this happened last week he does need a hit in walks per nine though we can't just artificially put him to gold because we'd like we'd like him to get there the fact of the matter is, if they do it right, they got to give him a big K bump, but also a big walk hit. All right, we have two more that are revisits, and then a bunch of new ones. So let's go back out to St. Louis for Wainwright. All he does is continue to pitch well. He really looks a lot like himself lately. So you got to be careful when you write off pitchers. And I understand, you know, I was there like, oh, man, I just guess he doesn't have it this year. It's just not looking like his year. He was on Sirius XM this offseason kind of talking. You know, it was tongue-in-cheek, but it was during one of those industry fantasy drafts, and he got drafted pretty late. And so he calls in to the radio station. He's like, what? Why are you guys taking me so late? I think he listens to the station for fantasy football stuff because he's a big fantasy guy. And he was, again, he wasn't like being nasty about it. It was all playful. But he's like, oh, come on. I'm going to show them. I can't believe I was drafted this late. And it was like really interesting to hear because part of it was serious, of course. Like he's like, no, I'm going to show you guys that I should be an ace. But part of it was, of course, being funny. I bought into it a little bit, though. I was like, you know what? He's right, though, because he decided how quickly he came back from that, that leg injury. And he's like, old? I'm not old. You know, uh, I, sure, I don't have my velocity that I used to, but my body's in great physical condition. I'm, I'm ready to go out there and beast. So I bought into it a little bit, and it's starting to pay off. He was downgraded on May 20th, rightfully so. I get it. But then since then, he has 7.6 hits, 2.1 walks, 8.3 Ks, and .4 homers. So we got the hits up by five at least. I, I could see it going up more. 
The strikeouts are back on track a bit, so I got that up to 55. He didn't K more than five in his first 11 starts, and now he's done it in six of his last nine. And then the homer, just for an artificial, you know, for our, for the market, I mention this out all the time, homers per nine does not affect gameplay online, but of course it affects the overall, and if it can get him to 85, then by all means. He deserves it, mind you. I'm not saying we're doing it just to get him to gold. I'm saying that it might not affect us on the field, but it can get him gold, which it does, and then all of a sudden we have a better card that we can sell or keep, depending how you roll. And then the last one here, potential trade candidate. I don't see him getting traded. Getting traded, he's under long-time team control. He is just 29, and like, who the hell they got? Matt Shoemaker's been great. He was upgraded on uh, June 17th. Since then, 9.1 Ks, 9.3 hits, 1.8 walks, 0.9 homers. Only 0.7 homers since May 21st, and homers were a really big issue for him early in the season. It was actually really, really bad. How, bad, uh, how much he was getting bombed out with the homers. The big focuses here are the uh, strikeouts and walks, though. We got this up to 79, and then the walks up four points to 85, and then the homer start trickling back up a bit. Got to give him some credit for what he's been able to do. You don't want to go crazy because he has had home run issues in his past, but a little five-point upgrade there should help. And again, we're at 82. This could be what it takes to get him to 85, but I don't, I don't know. It is. So that's, that's four new golds. I don't know if they're going to do that, guys. And I've got probably got more coming up. Actually, I don't know. I don't know if any of these will actually get to gold. But, again, I just don't know how many new golds they want to put into the market. You know? It, it might be a thing where they want it balanced and like it's going to have this many golds. So if we have gold, we got to take somebody out. I don't know. But... The fact of the matter is, uh, there's an ironclad case for Verlander, Sanchez, Wainwright, and Shoemaker. They've all been doing it for well over a couple weeks. I mean, we're talking months in some instances. And some of them are coming back from downgrades, so they need to get back to where they were because they've shown that they're back. All right. Now for the new ones to this week. Remember... On the uh, June 19th upgrades, we had this guy, Zach Britton, and I spoke very highly of him, and I think I pushed him pretty damn close to Diamond, and it would, ma it would make perfect sense. I would not bat an eye if they put him Diamond. He was upgraded on June 24th, but it was not enough. Since then, 4.5 hits per nine, 2.3 walks, no homers, 10.5 Ks. That's ridiculous. Here's where I'm getting the biggest upgrade. The hits per nine just needs to go up. 83 is too low for what he does. For as difficult as he is to square up and, and consistently hit, he needs to be in the 90s. There, I said it. He's a 149 average, which is second um, uh, amongst our relief pitchers this year. That's ridiculous. Strikeouts need to start meandering their way up. And here's the thing. This is an interesting case, too, by the way, because I'm moving him all the way up to 91. His 10.3 strikeouts per nine is really, really good, right? But it's not the punch you in the face when you look at it, like uh, on the on the stat page, like a Batances or um, Sean Kelly's had a monstrous one. Chapman, of course, Kenley Jansen. Here's the thing, though, and the reason I think he still deserves a substantial upgrade there is because his swinging strike rate is second this year and fourth if you if you go from 2015 till now and what that means is if he really wanted to i guarantee you guys he could strike out 15 batters per nine innings but it would be more taxing on him basically he would have to do more work instead he just throws that ridiculous sinker gets a guy to beat the ball into the ground on one pitch and you're out as opposed to using five six maybe seven pitches to get a strikeout but you better believe that he can do it. So I think that the potential for him to be a big strikeout, like an, an obscene strikeout guy, should be in there, even though he's merely really, really good. So instead of being super duper elite, he's really, really good. I want him to kind of have that super elite potential because of the swinging strike rate. And those are the only two upgrades that I'm, I, I'm focused in on right now. His home run per nine is fine. Maybe a tick, you know, I guess we'll, we'll say a tick on that. The walk rate... 
uh, 2.3 since his last upgrade. That's fine. 82. There's no problems with that at all. I don't think that necessarily needs to be moved up uh, one way or another. Honestly, they could really move up the control on his slider. He is able to command it pretty darn well, and that's why he gets so many swinging strikes. But I'm not going to be too picky here. Um, and again, they don't focus on the pitches in season. I get it. So we're focused on the per nines. This is taking him from 89 to 93. And so it's a four-point jump to Diamond, but I think he deserves it. I absolutely do. I stand by it 100%. Next up, actually, this is a revisit. I should, I didn't have it in the section. Oh, no. Actually, I think last week I said consider him, but I, he might not get it. So now I am going back and giving him an official another upgrade, Danny Duffy. He was upgraded uh, recently, I think. A couple weeks ago, maybe? He's been on the upgrade show a couple different times. But I'm ready for another upgrade. Just check this out. Just as a starter. He jumped in the rotation, I think, in late May just as a starter, which is which is harder than relieving. And that's why I'm taking out the relief work. I'm not taking out the relief work to make him look better. If anything, it makes it, it, it hurts him because the relief work was insane. But I'm pulling it out to show that you don't wanna, his numbers aren't artificially inflated by the fact that he was a reliever. So just as a starter, Danny Duffy has 9.9 Ks, 1.8 walks, 0.8 homers, and 7.4 hits. That's a gold player. That is a gold starting pitcher. Now, he does have some pedigree on his record that goes against that, right? He's taken a while to develop. Lefties often take longer. I don't know what it is exactly. Maybe it's the mechanics of, of not facing, you know, um, I, I don't know. I, I can't even think of what it would be because I don't know that not facing lefties growing up would necessarily be a problem because lefties usually dominate lefties. So I really don't know what it is that as a general rule, if you're going to kind of just blueprint and, and then you got to look case by case, but just as a general rule, lefties tend to take a little bit longer. And so it's not like he's old, but he has some bad work on, on his ledger, but he's really coming into his own and the stuff has always been there. He has, he does have prospect pedigree. And so I think he needs to be treated like a gold player. He's on the cusp. Let's get into these upgrades. The walk rate, I think we need to see it move up sharply eight points. Strikeout rate, three more up to 82. Home run rate. Now, here's an interesting one because the last time he was on the upgrade show, he had like whatever the sample I used, he had 1.5 homers per nine, which is horrific. Now, I don't know if you remember what I told you earlier. Now, as a starter, he has 0.8. So what that means is since that point where he was terrible, he's gotten way better. He's really keeping the ball in the yard. I want to say it's two homers in like his last six maybe starts or something it was anyway it was a really good number 0.8 as a starter is completely fine oh yeah here we go he he allowed three to detroit um five starts ago but in the but, excuse me six starts ago but in the five since then he's allowed four homers total so we're actually going to give him a little bit of a homer upgrade nothing crazy because he does still have that history but we'll just bump him up a few points there i think this probably takes him to goal Sure does, up to an 86. So that's yet another gold, guys. So listen, I, I want to be realistic about the fact that maybe Verlander Sanchez, Wainwright, Shoemaker, and Duffy don't all get gold in the same week. I don't know if it's something where they, again, I don't know the, the mechanics behind it, if they want to limit the influx of golds, but at least half of them have to get it. So I would stay invested in all six. They're all good players anyway. Uh, so you can feel comfortable doing that. I hope at least three of them are able to get the, the upgrades they deserve. All right, next up is an interesting one. I don't know how much usability it's going to give him. He's kind of a bland player, and I don't think in online play you want to use a guy with his velocity necessarily. Although I could see his pitch mix in, in kind of the, if someone who's like a crafty pitcher, I could see him cutting, cutting me up in, in, in a given start. Uh, Mike Leak. So this is really fo focused in on just his strikeouts and walks because they've been really good lately. His .3 walks per nine, .3 walks per nine. A third of a walk every nine innings. So like no walks. 
That's in the last 30 days. That's his. That, that, that's the best in the league. Next best was like 1.1, which is obviously still really, really good. For the season, he's at 1.2, which is third in baseball behind Clayton Kershaw and Josh Tomlin. And since the start of June, he has 8.1 Ks, which is actually really good for him because in 8.1, if he could, if he could sustain it, would be maybe something in the low 70s uh, for a K9, or maybe maybe the high 60s. But either way, he's at 51. We're gonna bump him up a little bit here. We're just gonna give him the four points to 55. But that walk rate, we gotta bump that up big time. He's always been a really good walk guy, so I bumped it up 10 points, taking him from a 79 to an 81. Nothing crazy there, but deserved upgrade, simply put. Next up, old timer. He's been on everybody's favorite team. He's been on every team in the league. Jason Grilly. What are you? What are you? How old? Is that? Where, where's his age? What the hell is his age? Did I miss it? Who cares? He's old. Let's just let's just leave it at that. You're old, Grilly. I'm old too, though. He's been beasting, man. And here's the thing: when he got his downgrade, he deserved it. But this, the thing with relievers, man is they can have a, a, a bad week and it can it can infect their numbers for two months down the road to where you look at their bottom line, you're like, he's not having that good of a season. And then you kind of isolate where they maybe made a change or got a pitch back and they're they're amazing. And that's kind of the case with Grilly. Um, he was downgraded on, on May 20th. Again, he deserved it. But since then, just since that point, 4.7 hits per nine, 4.2 walks. So too many walks, but no hits and 13.9 strikeouts per nine, 0.8 home runs. So we're not gonna touch home runs. Uh, we're gonna leave, uh, we're gonna push the walk rate down a couple ticks, just cause uh, 4.2 is too many. But that hits per nine needs to start making its way back up. And I'm gonna pop a 12 spot on it up to 75. Because he's been a nasty reliever before. This is not out of nowhere. It was just a situation where I think he's been dealing with injuries. And now that he has his stuff back, he's been really darn good. Did I do anything else? No, just the hits. And, oh, the Ks need to go up. To five points. He's just, I mean, he, he, he's he got a ton of swing and miss. So the, did I already do the Ks or was it at 86? Did I do it from 81 to 86 or was it at 86 to 91? I can't remember. You know what, I'm just gonna do this. I'm not gonna wait for the chat to see it. Just go back to it really fast. Okay, it was 86. Sweet life ball. 43. And I don't think I took it. was supposed to be minus 3 on the walks, not minus 2. So I was botching that left and right. I'm a clown. This probably moves him to silver. So yeah, 78, right on the dot there. So, you know, it ends up maybe being one of those guys that you look at in, in a BR situation. 91 K9. You could see him being in a bronze round. Uh, that slider, I think, is pretty filthy. Though he can still run it up. If his 94 is his average, that means full meter or full analog, you could probably run it up uh, to 95, 96. Again, even as a bronze right now, he might he might already be usable in a BR situation. But uh, if he gets those upgrades, even more so. This guy's just gonna make me look like a dipshit because uh, I'm gonna give him an upgrade. He's probably gonna go out and give up 52 runs. Because that's his favorite thing to do is trick people into thinking he's good and then be like, ha I got you, I actually suck. That's Michael Pineda, but you know what? He deserves it right now. He was downgraded on June 3rd, and again, it was not undeserved at all. He was looking terrible. But since that point, 6.6 .6 hits, 2.7 walks, 11.3 Ks, 1.3 homers. So the homers are problematic, as they always are. But I'm going to go ahead and give him some hits and strikeout love. We're gonna get him up to 55 here, and we're gonna move the strikeouts up five points as well, up to 82. He's leading the American League with 10.7 strikeouts per nine this season. So maybe 82 is even low. You know what, it actually is. I'm gonna go at 84. Because, I mean, he does deserve it. He's still a you know, home run machine. I can't, I can't give him any love on that. And uh, 2.7 walks is good, but so is a 74 rating, so he's fine there. And probably lose him up to silver, though. Yeah, easily. Back up to silver. 
He'll piss it away by the end of the season. Don't worry. But uh, for now, it's deserved. All right, we got four more. I think they're all commons. Oh, the one, this first one's a bronze, and then three commons. Everyone's favorite. But you know what? We're an equal opportunity upgrader here. Common lives matter. But Michael Feliz is not a common. And you know what? I feel like we have a part in that. Because if you've been watching these shows for a while, you know that I was on this Michael Feliz train early. And that was back when I was upgrading pitches. And so I'm in there and I'm like, no, his slider needs to be this more velocity. And he really controls it because of these numbers. Oh my God, I cannot even tell you how long upgrades used to take when I did that sort of stuff. I'm almost glad they don't update the pitches in season because, holy shit, that would just four hours every week. All right, but Michael Feliz has continued to beast out since we upgraded him. So we, we need another fat upgrade here. He was upgraded on June 3rd. Since then, 12.6 Ks, 8.4 hits, 4.2 walks, 1.4 homers. So another one of these guys that, um, you know, walks walks a lot, but uh, makes, and gives up too many homers, but makes up for it by the fact that he's a huge swing and miss guy. So bump that down a few points. Bump the hits up. Six points and the strikeouts up ten points and we'll see what that does because he's been a monster he's just a total beast it's probably just something in the low 70s but I just want to make him better the better I can make him and the better we can get him to where he belongs the more he can be used because look He's got a 40 stamina, which is better than most relievers. They're in the 25 range, which can help. And again, I'm always thinking of the different game ways you can use these guys. I know a lot of times I lean on Battle Royale as a good usage, but I can envision a scenario where you're using him in one of those crazy long games where you need like two innings out of a scrub, uh, and he's you know still technically a scrub at 71, and you can actually get it because he was a starter pretty recently. That's why he has that 40 stamina. Get really good swing and miss. Good velocity. If you can control that slider, you got something. So, just up to a 71. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. This, these next three, I mean, again, they're common. So, we're, we're building a foundation. This guy's been pretty interesting, though. I don't know that he's good, but he's been interesting. Zach Eflin, hats off to you. He has, he has two, two complete games this month, including a shutout of... Pittsburgh. I almost said Philly. That's the team that he's on. Home dude is a 66. I already passed it. He's a prospect of some note, but not somebody that I think is going to evolve into some sort of greatness. But 8.0 8 hits, 1.1 homers, 1.4 walks, and 4.6 Ks. 4.6 Ks. Sweet, sweet life. But we'll bump those hits up to 52. We'll take the K's down to 40. I'm sorry, dude. You can't be having a 59 with that kind of... Because this is, this is going to end up being a downgrade, isn't it? But don't worry. I'm moving the walks way up to 72. Because he, he never walked guys in the in the minors either. Honestly, that should probably be up more. Because when you when you see what he's done, that's been what he's, what he's done in the majors. Just pump in the zone with, with strikes. That's what he did in the minors, too. He was known as kind of a controller. So I'm actually going to go all the way up to 75 here. I don't think that's that's out of bounds, especially when you're really compensating for the fact that he doesn't get a ton of Ks. You know, he's not stifling hits out of his mind. He's a little bit above average. And so, um, you know, I don't know what use there is for this card, but I just thought he deserved an upgrade. So I don't always have to have, I don't always like make sure that here's five uses that you can get out of them. But even with that upgrade, it did it did get him into the, uh, into the bronze range. So welcome there. Those of you sitting on your 100 uh, Zach Eflin cards, Y'all about to cash in. Now, I know most of you have invested at least 50 to 60% of your stubs in Jake Barrett. Right, guys? Jake Barrett. You know, the 57 overall reliever that Mario Marcos Mendoza begged me to upgrade. But you know what? He said, take a look at him. I took a look at him. He's a pretty good reliever. He deserves an upgrade. Let's be honest. 8.2 hits. 
1.0 homers, 3.0 walks, 9.2 strikeouts. Now, the thing of it is, you can get sharp upgrades when you start this low. And this is something that we've consistently seen with these young guys. They start their walk rate so low. It's like a, I think it's the easiest way for them to make a rookie be volatile and, and, and kind of shitty uh, right out of the gate while respecting the rest of the stuff that he did in the minors. That's probably the, the one nozzle that you can turn without having to finely tune everything. So I kind of get it. But at the same time, some of these just start too low. And I'm not even necessarily bumping him, you know, way above average. He's only going to be at 46. But it's a hell of a lot better than where he was. And also, he's going to get 7 points on his hits per 9. And 10 points on his strikeout rate. Actually, up to 75. Because that 9.2, a 75 is usually a strikeout per inning. So there's those three upgrades for sweet, sweet Jake Barrett. There you go, Marcos. Never ask me for an upgrade again. I'm not doing a Sylvian, Silvino Bracco upgrade session next week. Or a Tuffy Ghost Wish, who's not even a real player. Where the hell is that guy? There he is, 63. Wow, cash in those, those gold tickets, y'all. One more, and nobody even asked me to do this. I upgraded a 60 on my own, guys. I can do bad all by myself. CJ Edwards, what's up, dude? You lean some bitch. He's a beast. Oh god, Marcos is in here. Going crazy. Going ham. CJ Edwards. Talk about a monster, man. This guy, I, I'm giving him some pretty sharp upgrades here. This could actually really do some damage in terms of where it takes him. But stick with me here. 3.7 hits per nine. Three. Point seven. I understand that there's some good luck in that. It, you're not going to maintain a 3.7. Chapman doesn't have a 3.7 hits per nine rate. So yeah, there's some good luck there. You're getting some bad bit. Everything's breaking your way, but that's also a lot of skill. Like that, you don't fake your way to that. You don't just luck into that. So he's got a 3.7 hits per nine, 0.6 homers, 3.1 walks, and 10.4 strikeouts. Also a 19% swinging strike rate, which is fantastic and a 95 mile per hour fastball. I bring that up because it needs to be up at 95 miles per hour. He's gone to the bullpen. He could he could really pump it up as a starter too when he was a, when he was a, uh, a a big prospect as a starter. I think he's going to end up being a really strong reliever um, in the near future, like a closer type. Not necessarily this year. Obviously, they just got Chapman. They have Rondon. They don't need him to do that. But I'm talking in the next year or two. I think C.J. Edwards is somebody that is a name that we're going to get to know. And, you know, uh, wind up actually being somebody we end up loving in maybe Diamond Dynasty of next year. So I'm going I'm going heavy, y'all. I'm going up to 66, 20-point upgrade. Get off me. Don't at me. Don't even at me. Strikeouts. I'm doing it. I'm doing it up big. I said on, uh, earlier, I, honestly, I could go higher. He's at 10.4. I said 75 is about a one, uh, about a 9.0 strikeout per 9. Could go higher. I'm just going to do that right now. 15 points. Get off me. Don't at me. Home runs. Same deal. Going up here to 68. 15-point upgrade. He has a point. Not only does he have .6 homers per nine in the majors, he had .5 in the minors. So he's always, and that's for his entire minor league career, including when he was a starter. So he's always stifled homers. His home run rate already should have been high. And then his walk rate. He's walking 3.1. Per nine, not great, but be, but it, that's about average. So I got him up to a 50. So we did we did big things here for C.J. Edwards. He went from a 60 up to a 99. Oh wait, not quite. But I don't know where he's going to be, so I got to find him. Up to a 71. What's up? 11 point upgrade. We've seen upgrades this big, guys. We've seen these kind of wholesale. You know, I don't want to I don't want to say. It, admitting that they got it wrong because that's not fair really because they they do their best guess they don't want to overrate a card coming in but it's like it's like a catch-up card is what we should call it like they're catching up because they came in low the way they should and they, the the guy had an exemplary performance that really took him up and they'll do the big upgrade for these guys at the lower tiers all in one fell swoop so i could i think we could see something like a 10 to 11 point upgrade for cj edwards and you know what i'm going to say but i'm going to say it anyway if they also give him that velocity upgrade that he deserves now you're talking about a br 
you're talking about a BR bronze reliever that I'm happy to put in there. Not somebody I'm looking to use. Obviously, those bronze relievers that you get, those are for later. Um, you know, you don't want to necessarily get into them in the second inning of a game. But once you start creeping into the fifth and sixth, and maybe you're holding that one silver bullet, I guess pun intended, I really meant just like a silver Nate Jones or something that you, you're like, I don't necessarily want to use him just yet. This is the kind of guy who can bridge that gap. All right, those are our upgrades. Let's go ahead and review them. First off, we created a mock-up of an Edwin Diaz card. He's a reliever for the Seattle Mariners who's been even better than C.J. Edwards, to be honest. So, frankly, I might have actually undersold him. It was a little tough to make a mock-up because we were using some crappy card, and you probably need to start from scratch. So maybe I should have done better on that. The guy I made ended up being a 68. I'm going to say that he should come in as at least a 70 if C.J. Edwards is a 71. And the reason I would still have Edwards a little bit higher is because he was a prospect. Well, actually, they were both prospects. Maybe he should, maybe Diaz should just be a 71 right out of the gate, too. Either way, he needs to have his card. I don't know why he hasn't. There's probably some reason that he has been in the majors for this long and hasn't had his card. Maybe he hasn't filed with the MLBPA yet or something. Maybe he's got his paperwork sitting on his desk at home or some kind of, some kind of noise. Anyway, so we created his card, and then we added 52 golds to the pool. We got Justin Verlander, 84 to 86. Aaron Sanchez, same thing, 84 to 86. Lance McCullers, 83 to 84. Couldn't get him to gold because his walk rate needs to take a hit. They're going to give him an upgrade to the strikeouts and, and home runs, which would be very realistic. They need to hit his walks. 5.5 is just not cutting it. Wainwright, 83 to 85. Shoemaker, 82 to 85. Zach Britton, 89 to 93, ladies and gentlemen. Zach Britton should be a diamond. I'm, I'm going to keep holding my breath for that one. Might not happen this week. It better be happening soon, though. I just don't know how they can justify not doing it. Danny Duffy, 83 to 86. Yet another gold. I'll give a disclaimer. Do I think that there's going to be one, two, three, four, five brand new golds? Probably not. But I'll bet on, on at least two of them coming through. Hopefully they get three of them. Uh, Zach, uh, Mike Leake, 79 to 81. Jason Grilly, 76 to 78. Michael Pineda, 76 to 79. And they're probably back down to 76 in another month because that's just what he does. Michael Feliz, 69 to 71. Zach Eflin, 66 to 71. CJ Edwards, 60 to 71. I like the number 71 apparently. And Jake Barrett, Barrett 57. Yes, we upgraded a 57 to 63. We'll see how it turns out on Friday. Thanks for watching.